Bangkok International Motor Show 2024 came and went, and this year, the show was filled to the brim with cars, cars, and, well, yeah, more cars. There were four halls worth of cars worthy of an entire team of editors and videographers to cover. And we sent Earl. On the main floor with the main exhibitors and along for the ride with Isuzu Philippines, Earl was in for a great trip and here's everything that he managed to see. Starting out, let's go to the Isuzu booth. And guess what? The D-Max and the MUX were both there, but not the ones that you and I know back home. While the MUX is still the current one we know, the D-Max is in its 2024 version. It's a big facelift with a new grill, new front bumper, new rear bumper, and even new lights. There is also an updated interior and more goodies like digital display, but more on that later in a separate video. Do subscribe so you don't miss out on that walk around. On top of that, there was the Isuzu D-MAX EV concept. Now, it's an electric pickup truck, and I don't know how to feel about that, but it's got the new 2024 face, but with more EV elements to it. Plus, it has a dual motor, four-wheel drive system that draws power from a 66.9 kilowatt battery pack. The front motor has up to 53.6 horsepower, while the rear produces 120 plus which is really nice. The torque on this pickup truck is rated at about 325 Newton meters, which is about on par with the entry-level pickup trucks. But even then, we have to remember that this is an electric vehicle and thus the torque works like a light switch. Wait, that was a snap. I'm confused. So we're expecting Isuzu to develop its concept further and you could say that it will come with a more powerful motor in the future. Ford was in Bangkok to announce its V6 Wildtrak and Everest. Now, these are the three-liter six-cylinder turbo diesel engines with 250 horses and 600 Newton meters of torque. It's one heck of an engine and something that we've been wanting in the Philippines. Now that the motor is in the ASEAN region, will the Philippines eventually get it, if at all? Ford, please. Please, 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 please. GWM may be a new brand in the Philippines, but the brand apparently had a grand spectacle waiting for BIM showgoers. There were a lot of cars at their booth and stuff that we're expecting to see in the Philippines perhaps soon. The Tank Series has two models, the 300 and the 500, and boy, do the designs of these cars look epic. They look a bit nostalgic. You've got a sort of Jeep with the 300 and the 500 looks like a 70s era SUV with all its boxy lines. Inside, however, and you will see that its fit and finish is quite impressive. Even the design too. Taking cues from the past, but modernizing them to mesh well with picky consumers, these cars are indicators that GWM is not to be taken lightly. On another note, something that's a bit familiar but new is the GWM, believe it or not, that's pronounced Power. This car is essentially the Canon, and if you want to watch a review on that, the link's down below. But what makes this car so interesting is the fact that its doors open sideways, in addition to working like a normal tailgate. How about that, huh? Interesting to see and interesting to wonder if and when GWM Philippines will bring the version of the Canon or Power to the Philippines. Next up, Hyundai. No stranger to international displays. Earl also had a chance to get up close and personal with the brand's newest performance EV, and he was quite impressed as I was. Jack's the only one that hasn't seen it yet, and he is jealous. Actually, he's pissed. Also alongside it, or in front of it rather, was the Elantra N, and word around town says that Hyundai Philippines will also be debuting this car sometime soon. Either that, or right now, depending on when this video comes out or when you watch it. MG also had quite a display, as they're also quite a force in Thailand. The ZS EV, which we have yet to see, was there in the show, and so was the Cyberster. Two new vehicles stuck out, however, which were the MG5 Pro and the MG VS. Now, the VS looks like a smaller version of the ZS, and we think it's also cheaper in comparison. It's a good candidate to bring into the country, if we're being honest, and MG doesn't have an ultra-compact and ultra-affordable crossover at the moment. Would be nice too, given that the ZS sold very well because of its value proposition. Could MG do well with another value-oriented crossover? No. Oh, and speaking of value, the MG5 Pro is basically the MG GT, and it wouldn't be a stretch to see MG Philippines slapping on a Pro moniker at the end of the GT name anytime soon. Now on to the last two brands, Mitsubishi and Toyota. 
two big players came out swinging with some very interesting presentations. Mitsubishi had the facelifted Montero Sport on full display at the BIMS, and alongside it, they announced the Expander HEV, a hybrid electric version of the MPV Filipinos can't get enough of. It could be just the right combination at just the right time. If you've ever begged Mitsubishi to make a hybrid version of the Expander, well, beg no more. I guess all we have to do now is wait for it, right? Finally, last and certainly not least, is Toyota. While there were a lot of cars that you and I are currently familiar with in Thailand, there was one very familiar face in the show with a totally different name. Kinda like Chrysostomo Ibarra and Simon. Anyway, the Tamarao, or the Hilux Champ as it's known over in Thailand, took up a big amount of floor area for the brand at the show. We saw multiple configurations as well, ranging from the standard delivery truck style all the way to an ambulance and even a version that Jack and Earl would like to own. Earl also got shots of the interior and basic as it may be, it actually looks pretty darn good. Finally, Toyota, the Vios, please, when can that happen? Let us know. Folks, thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe, see you soon.